our topic for the, for today is about the moment error theorem. And before we, I I will I can give you um, examples, we will be discussing first the concept behind the moment area theorem. No? So this is actually our our uh, second um, geometric method sa mga videos na in-upload natin. No? So, moment area theorem or the moment area method in, let's have first a uh, simply support beam no? para magkaroon tayo ng idea why is it called why it is called the moment area theorem or method Okay, so for example, we have here a simply supported beam and let's say it has a varying load. And let's, con let's uh, give it thickness yung beam. Then let's draw its elastic curve. So let's say this is its elastic curve. Then I will be choosing two points. Let's say this is point A. And this is point B of the beam. Okay? So meaning, this is the uh, deflected position of point A. And this is the deflected position of point B. Okay? Now, based on our elastic beam theory, so which was actually discussed no some time ago na if you want to watch the elastic beam theory and, and how was, was it derived uh, you can see the link in the description box now so last time we said based on the elastic beam theory that the ratio between the moment and the flexural rigidity is just equal to 1 over Or radius of curvature or that is just equal to y double prime okay so meaning we can say that we have y double prime is equal to m over ei but remember y double prime is actually equal to the second derivative of the function y with respect to uh, x remember uh, that the function y here is actually the function of the elastic curve uh, or the, the equation of the elastic curve. It is equal to m over ei. But then again, the second derivative of a given function with respect to x is actually the first derivative of the slope with respect to x. Okay, Because the slope is just the first derivative of the function. Therefore, the second derivative of the function is actually the, the derivative of, or the first derivative of the slope. So let's focus on this function. Okay. So let's let's write it again. We have here your d theta over dx equals m over ei. Okay. So we have here your d theta equals m over ei dx. And let's integrate both sides of the equation. Okay. So, ano po yung magiging limiting values natin? So, again, we have here, we will be considering in our beam, points A and B. So, let's say this is from point A to point B. No? And this is also from point A to point B. So, integrating d theta, that will just give you theta with a boundary limit of from point A to point B which is equal to the integral of M. So we have 1 over EI multiplied by the integral of M dx from point A to point B. But then again, last time, no? Remember that our moment, the moment function, is dependent on its location on the beam. Okay? So meaning, <coughs> since, let's say, kung magkakat ako ng section dito, and I will refer it to distance x. 
meaning our moment function is actually dependent on the independent variable x. Therefore, your moment m is actually equal to a function of x. And ano ba yung nakukuha natin when we are integrating a function of x with respect to the x? Okay, so let's have a commercial muna. Let's go back in our analytic geometry and integral calculus. No? So for example here, I am here, let's say, a curve. And that curve has an equation of, uh, let's say, just f of x. Okay, so this is your x, this is your y-axis. Okay. When we are integrating y dx, or that is actually integrating your f of x, dx, you're actually, based on our analytic, ge in, in, in our analytic geometry and integral calculus, we, have, we can represent it by having here a differential strip no? with a thickness of dx. And integrating it, meaning another term for integration is actually summation. So we are actually uh, summing up all the areas covered by your differential strip from this point up to this point. Okay? So in that case, ang ginagawa pala natin is if we are integrating a function with respect to x no, or with respect to its independent variable, we are actually getting the area of that function from this point up to this point. Okay? So, meaning we are getting the area. Meaning, if I am integrating um, m dx, where m is actually a function of x, I am actually getting the area of the moment function. Okay? So, let's continue our, our, our uh, derivation. No? So, we have here, uh, from limit ng a to b, paano ba tayo mag-substitute ng limit natin? It's actually the upper limit minus the lower limit. Meaning, that is theta b minus theta a equals 1 over ei multiplied by the area of the m diagram from what point? Since a to b lang yung kinoconsider natin, that is from a to b only. Meaning, ang kinukuha po pala natin area is the area of the moment diagram between points A and B. So for example, let's draw the moment diagram of that curve. Ulitin natin. Let's uh, draw again the simply supported beam. Ito ulit yung... So this is point A. This is point B. Okay. And let's draw the M diagram. Lagyan natin dito. Moment diagram. Let's say... Since, if we will be considering this varying load as a uh, gravity load, uh, we can assume that the moment is actually positive. Okay. So, ang kinukuha lang pala natin is the area of the moment diagram between points A and B. So, ito po yun. Okay. Meaning, from the equation, ito, we can say that theta b is equal to 1 over ei multiplied by the area of the moment diagram from point A to B plus theta a. So, nilipat lang po natin yung theta a on the right side of it, the equation. Okay, meaning... Based on the derivation, para daw makuha ko yung slope at point B ng beam. Okay? Kailangan ko lang daw kunin yung slope ng point A. Tapos i-add ko lang daw yung value ng area ng moment diagram between points A and B divided by the flexural rigidity, EI. Okay? So, actually, kung babalikan natin to, kung mapapansin nyo, Okay. Theta B minus theta A Or if we will be drawing here On our first diagram 
when we say slope, it's actually the slope of the tangent line at that point. No? So if I will draw a tangent line here. Okay. Tapos, this is your... Let's say this is your tangent B. Okay. Tapos, ito yung tangent A natin. We are actually getting... Ano ba ibig sabihin ng theta B minus theta A? It's actually the change in slope. No? That, that is the change in slope between points A and B. And based on our analytic geometry, pag sinabi natin change in slope, it's actually the intersection of the two lines. So, it can be represented itong, ito, no? yung angle between the two tangent lines. So, this is actually your slope B minus the slope of the tangent line at point A. Okay? So, balikan ulit natin dito. Ano kaya ito? Meaning, this is the change of the slope between two points is just equal to the area of the moment diagram between those two points divided by the flexural rigidity EI. Which is actually, kung, kung sa tingin nyo nagiging familiar kayo dito, because this is actually your first moment area theorem. Okay, if you are reading your books, according to the first moment area theorem, the change in slope between the two points on the beam is actually equal to the area of the moment diagram between those two points divided by EI. So, malinaw po yun, no? Okay. Next. Ano naman po yung second moment area theorem natin? Okay? So let's draw again the simply supported beam. Okay, ito ulit yung loading natin. Then, your moment diagram. Your slow, ah, uh, your elastic curve, no? Point A, point B. Okay, now, the second moment area theorem is about the tangential deviations. So as you can see, based on our, and uh, based on our equation kanina, sabi natin we have uh, d theta over dx is equal to the M over EI. Which is actually, sabi natin kanina, we can have uh, D theta equals M over EI times DX. But remember, D theta is actually the second derivative. So, nung in-integrate natin siya kanina, that will now become DY over DX equals the integral of M over EI. Okay? So, as you can see, if we will be, we can actually determine the value of y, no? if we will be integrating it again, yung equation natin. And in that case, ang mangyari is we have the area of the moment diagram, then multiplied again by the function y. So, ah, sorry, multiply again by a distance x, no? So, Let's discuss it in this figure. So, ano po ba yung tinatawag natin na tangential deviation? Okay. So, for example, here, let's say, uh, I will have here a tangent line again at point A. Okay. Hindi, hindi siya mukhang tangent line, no? Kasi tumama din siya. But the tangent, tangent line is actually defined as a line passing through a single point. Okay. On a curve which is known as the point of tangency. So, let's say this is your tangent line A. We define a, tangent, a tangential deviation as actually the distance, the vertical distance from the point of the elastic curve being considered 
to the reference tangent line. Okay, it's different from the deflection. So, para mas makita natin, let's draw it here. For example, if I say the tangential deviation of point B with respect to A, when I say this symbol, it's actually the tangential deviation of point B, meaning point B po yung kinukonsider natin with respect to a tangent line. In this case, that is tangent line A. So sabi natin kanina, as we define the tangential deviation, is actually the vertical distance from the point of the elastic curve being considered, that is point B, nasan po ba yung point B sa elastic curve? Ito po yun. Okay? With respect to the tangent line A. So ito, itong point na to, hanggang dito sa tangent line, the vertical distance, that is the tangential deviation of B with respect to A. Okay? It's different from deflection. Kasi po ang deflection is defined as the vertical distance from the original position of the beam to the elastic curve. So mula dito hanggang dito, that is actually your deflection at point B. So it's very different. Okay? So how do we define the second moment area theorem? Ang sabi lang niya is, if we are to determine the tangential deviation of a certain point with respect to a tangent line, it is just equal to 1 over EI multiplied by the area of the moment diagram between those two points. Ah, sorry. Diagram. Between those two points, that is from point A to B. So, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, since we will be integrating it again, it will be multiplied. No? by the independent variable which is actually the centroid of the area of the moment diagram. So, ibig sabihin, if we are considering the moment area diagram between points A and B, multiply natin siya sa centroid niya. Papunta po saan? Obviously, meron tayong dalawang direction ng centroid. If this is your centroid, it has actually a, a distance. Pwede siyang papunta kay point A pwede siyang papunta kay point B. But always remember, kung ano po yung point na kinoconsider natin or yung ina-analyze natin, in this case, that is point B, dun natin multiply yung direction or yung centroid, which is actually the centroid papunta kay B. If this is a tangential deviation of A with respect to B, same area moment diagram kasi from A to B yung kinukonsider natin pero ang multiply po natin na centroid is centroid naman po papunta kay point A since point A will now be the this uh, the point that to be considered okay so that is uh, how we derived the air the the formulas no of the of the moment area theorem so yun lang po yung dalawang kinoconsider natin this equation which is your second moment area theorem and the first equation which is just actually the difference of the slope is equal to the area of is equal to the moment area theorem. So, yun lang yung tatandaan natin. Kapag change in slope, which is the first, area lang ng, ng diagram. Divide by EI. Okay? Kapag uh, tangential deviation yung kinoconsider natin, area ng moment diagram between those two points divided by EI multiplied by the centroid. Okay? So, before we go to our next video for for our uh, example computations ano ba yung advantage in using the moment area theorem rather than doon sa first na diniscuss natin which is the double integration method okay so for me moment area theorem is easier if you will be given problems with uh, varying values of EI meaning yung beam natin iba-iba po yung segment ibig sabihin pwedeng for example, itong beam na to, from this point up to this point, ang value ko ng i is just i, or yung moment of inertia is just i. From a to b, pwedeng maging 2i, tapos from b to, uh, to this point is 3i. So, it will be very difficult for us if we will be using the double integration method 
because the double integration method based on our discussion, we will be having a single equation that will represent the, the whole, no? Eh, ang ginagawa natin doon, we, we have um, yung EI natin or your flexural rigidity natin that's on the left side of the equation. Okay? So, in that case, it will be very difficult for us kung magkakaroon tayo ng varying values of E and I. Unlike here, since ang ginagawa naman natin is yung area ng diagram, we can, uh, after getting the area of the moment diagram, pwede na natin siyang, or after drawing the, the, the moment diagram, pwede na kagad natin siyang directly divide the values of E and I kung, kung varying po siya doon sa beam natin. Okay? So, kaya mas madali po ito. So, actually, if, and also, uh, if you are not good with uh, integration, especially in integration, medyo mahirap nga naman sa inyo talaga yung double integration method. But if you are very good in drawings, ang sobrang simple lang naman ng pagdrawing natin ng diagram, especially if you are, if you are well-versed, in uh, moment by parts so yung moment by parts natin the concept of moment by parts is actually based on the concept of uh, uh, moment by uh, sorry um, the method of superposition meaning it is actually based on paghihiwa-hiwalay natin ng load okay, to draw the, their independent moment diagrams okay, so yun po yung i-discuss natin on our next video so on how to use the moment by parts so we can have a uh, better moment diagram and we will be having a sample calculations of number one statically determinate beam so we can have a review then the second one is uh, since our main goal here is to discuss statically indeterminate beam okay so kasi ang, ang video na to is actually for theory structures too we will also be giving um, an example for uh, statically indeterminate beam. So later yon on our third video for moment area theory. Okay, so see you guys in our next video.